pleased to uh, to welcome uh, Professor Hazan Abdallah from the University of East London to the stage. Good morning, everybody. I'm so delighted to be uh, with you today, and really thank you so much indeed for the organizers. Uh, brilliant, uh, well done, really, uh, event bringing really key employers, key stakeholders on board to celebrate really the success of the apprenticeship uh, in the UK. What I'd like really to do over the last few minutes is to basically explain to you the rationale for us as a provider really to engage in the higher degree apprenticeship in particular, with clear focus on the STEM subjects. Uh, secondly, try to touch base on the national context really for the skills the country really desperately uh, need in, needed in order to uh, really enhance pro productivity. And then thirdly, really to give some examples uh, of really the apprenticeship we are offering. So University of East London, we are in a very, very unique uh, location in East London, London shifting east, as you all know. Uh, massive really flagship projects are taking place there. And we are working in partnership with those key stakeholders uh, in order to really uh, meet their needs. So East London is Europe's largest, really, regeneration area. Um, as you know, there are massive projects are taking place there. And we are not really a bunch of academics who just work really in their offices and try to deliver theoretical stuff. No, we work in partnership with employers. We listen to employers. We try to deliver bespoke, really, programs which meet their needs. So if you are interested in somebody who would work in partnership with you and deliver really uh, something for the next generation, uh, you uh, are welcome to talk, talk to us. Um, we are in architecture, computing, and engineering. We are first in London for student experience. That's the Guardian 2016. Um, we have a strong, really, vocational applied research, if you like. Uh, we are one of the top uh, modern, uh, 10 modern university, and we ensure that our graduates have the right ground needed for industry. So we equip them with that sort of key skills, and then they develop uh, further when they obviously move to industry. So the landscape uh, around East London is changing quite substantially, and that's why we have as well to adapt. We have to uh, work with employers who are in the driving seat in order to deliver that. So we have the business, as you know, Chinese business um, um, uh, uh, port, which is 1.7 billion investment. And obviously, that massive project would require lots of upskilling, lots of reskilling, very, very specific, obviously, uh, skills in, for instance, design, planning, the commissioning, obviously, of the projects, who's going to design, who is going to build. All these sort of activities, and what about the digital, obviously, activities, the impact of automation of these sort of massive projects? Now, we all know that we are a thriving nation. So we are not saying here that we are in crisis. No, we are so proud of the growth which is taking place across, really, our economy. And we all know there is an ambitious, obviously, pipeline uh, plant of 411 uh, billion uh, investment from the private and public sector in a wide range of area. That's including, as you know, transport, 127 uh, billion, uh, in energy, 244, communications, 2 billion, and so on. So wide range, obviously, of massive, really, projects. But the issue is we're facing major challenge here. And the challenge we're facing is where would we get, obviously, the skills needed to deliver those projects. And the skills is not really, uh, which is uh, really out of date skills. It's the skills which uh, obviously influenced by automation, influenced by big data, influenced by internet of things, influenced by a number of really very, very critical, uh, obviously emerging technology, which obviously drive um, uh, what this sort of growth. So, Examples of some projects and the sort of, obviously, workforce needed for that. HS2, as we all know, uh, it, we need about 2,000 apprenticeships. 
So, and 25,000 people employed will be employed during the construction of the project. Uh, if you look as well at the Crossrail 2, 60,000 jobs across the supply chain during the construction and will sustain about 200,000 jobs once in operation. It's very, very impressive. It's something we should be so proud of, but we cannot be complacent. We have to act, obviously, very, very quickly. Especially when you look, obviously, at the demand here, especially for the construction, for the infrastructure. So in 2015, you can see, in terms of existing workforce and the skills, about 380,000. But really, the gap started, obviously, widening by 2020 and beyond you will need about 425,000. Uh, that's obviously, you know, quite uh, scary because we need obviously this sort of skills with the right, obviously, talents in order to be able to deliver that. Obviously, there are uh, major issues with the um, Brexit. There's no doubt of that because some of these skills, obviously, we used to get from, uh, obviously, Europe. And if you look at productivity, uh, in the UK, we are, uh, in terms of the GBD per hour, ranked sixth out of the uh, G7 countries. So uh, Germany is about 36 higher than in the UK, over here, where we are here. So productivity, as you all know, is a value added over the number of working hours. So we need really to uh, obviously address this issue as quickly as possible. And uh, sure, the degree apprenticeship uh, in general will obviously help with that. Providing that providers are work obviously in partnership with employers in order to provide the necessary uh, skills needed. So you can see here the UK is basically just above obviously Italy. Um, and if you compare the average productivity growth rates since 2007, the UK ranks second bottom. Only Italy has a weaker average productivity, productivity growth. So there are obviously lots of things here we, we need to consider. The government is obviously acting proactively on that. So we uh, shortly will be hearing, or may, we may be already uh, uh, announcing 500 million uh, investment, obviously, for the uh, technical skills post-16. Uh, uh, if you look also at the industrial strategy, the green paper for the industry strategy and the 10 pillars, there is one key thing obviously being addressed there, which is obviously about the skill set. So the skill set and how do we able to upscale really our workforce, especially in the digital uh, era. So we are really a great nation in terms of innovation, in terms of achieving really major breakthrough. But we struggle in a number of cases, obviously, in translating this sort of innovation into real uh, products. So there are other countries like Japan and so on, uh, which are really uh, thriving in that uh, context. So what are we doing? We have really for each single subject we have at the university, because we are different, we are driven really and led by industry and employers, we have an industrial advisory board. The Industrial Advisory Board, in fact, uh, contribute, work in partnership with us in terms of the way we design, the way we deliver our curriculum. I bring them actually to the classroom to inspire, enthuse, and to challenge staff and students equally, because that's the way where you'll be able to get your students to excel. They provide case studies, they work with us on real life projects, and the degree apprenticeship was started again, similar way, uh, working together on how really we should deliver the degree apprenticeship. And we, in fact, have been uh, making some sort of substantial, really, uh, progress so far. So we've been offering, uh, since uh, last year, uh, the digital and technology solutions uh, in partnership with a number of world class organizations, but I would like to emphasize the importance of SMEs as well. And I would like those large organizations in the room to work more closely with SMEs because SMEs actually struggling really to get on the ladder for the degree apprenticeship. So this is something we need obviously to bear in mind. And now we are uh, on progress for delivering for this September, hopefully once the assessment being signed up, uh, to deliver three other 
uh, apprenticeship in construction site management, uh, in civil engineering site management, and construction design management. So the key thing about this is that we are very keen about raising the status of the apprenticeship. You are absolutely right. There is a misunderstanding, there is misperception among the youngsters and some of the uh, members of the community and societies about the status of the uh, apprenticeship. Now, what are we doing? All the awards are accredited by professional bodies, actually more than one professional bodies, in order to demonstrate to the community that the degree apprenticeship uh, is fa in fact is of a high standard. And that really has been uh, of a great success. Now talking to employers, there are really a number of uh, key things which have obviously uh, been shaping and impacting on the type of skill set they obviously uh, need. Uh, we all know the digital revolution, we all know the automation, uh, we know, know, all know how the big data analytics will influence how the rise of the robots, which uh, there are some stats, in fact, which says by 2050, uh, robots will take over 50% of our job. Watch around, watch that. That's very, very scary, in fact. So if we don't really uh, address all these sort of issue, uh, we obviously, uh, could be, um, uh, could have a setback. So graduates with uh, the right blend of skills, but also understand the wider societal uh, needs. That's highly, highly important. So employer says, come on, it's not just about the knowledge. It's not just about the technical skills. It's all about how would you work in, in a collaborative environment? How would you be able to listen to others? How would you be able to innovate? innovate? How would you work in a res resilient environment? understand the physical, sustainable, and socioeconomic impacts that projects bring to, uh, to community. Let's take an example, for instance. If you take uh, a project like Crossrail, 5,000 employees plus. So the 5,000 employees plus in a year time or so will have to move on to another project, maybe Tideway, maybe HS2. But you need, obviously, at the same time, to educate them or to re, uh, re, to re, re, uh, um, to uh, reskilling really this task force in order to move on to obviously the other projects. So that sort of lifelong learning, if you like, uh, education is highly important. So the skills could be uh, obviously transferable. And the way we designed, uh, in fact, the uh, degree apprenticeship is, why, is quite flexible. So we map really the portfolio and the qualification of every uh, apprentice. And then from there, we uh, decide at what level, uh, what's the entry level for that. Uh, so uh, it's quite flexible model. We also map the location uh, of the employers and we could send our staff to your really location in order to deliver on site the apprenticeship to uh, your uh, apprentices. So these are some of the key areas which actually we have been integrating into all our programs because these are very, very important, as you would appreciate, themes and skills, which will definitely um, bring prosperity to the economy. Internet of Things, as we know, the big data, the security. We embedded even then in the construction manage, engineering management programs some of the cybersecurity aspects because of supply chain uh, integration, as you would appreciate, and the data, obviously, uh, transmission across uh, the supply chain. So the model we are also proposing to employer is very, very flexible because uh, we can deliver that in terms of one day release. So it's 20% on campus and 80% obviously at the uh, company working on real life projects. Uh, or we can uh, deliver in intensive, intensive uh, block release. So that sort of combination, if you like, of uh, mode of delivery and that's supported by virtual learning environment. Let's give you an example. These are students. And we take those students to build their resilience and work in real life projects, sponsored and supported by large organizations like Atkins, for instance. So uh, that's the way really you build their skills, you build their resilience, and you uh, really uh, get them to understand how to apply basically the knowledge they have studied in real life applications. Highly, highly important. That's why most of our students, in fact, they get jobs even before graduations when they go in placement with 
employers. So examples, because of widening participation, balancing the gender. So some of our female graduates working cross rail, graduates in digital and technology solutions or cybersecurity working at the New York Stock Exchange as a system architect. And these are some of the uh, key skills really employers are really uh, keen about obviously all providers, not just our institutions, uh, incorporating and embedding these skills in their degree apprenticeship. Thank you so much indeed. If you'd like to take more, we'd be delighted to see you later. Thank you. <laughs>